Would you play Cam Akers or Josh Jacobs this weekend? Um, it's a good question. I feel like Josh Jacobs has been just a a big letdown the last like month. Um, you know, he started out really well. Uh, he had that terrible game against Atlanta where everybody was projecting that he would go off pretty good when uh, when the Falcons destroyed him. Didn't play against the Jets. Only nine points and half PPR against Indy. Um, I I don't know. I I think you probably start him just because of the matchup, but I don't know how much confidence you have, and you're not really like surprised if he doesn't do that much. I mean, he's RB eight on the year, but uh, he hasn't really done him done much the last three weeks. My so yeah, you start him, but ugh. I'm starting Cam Akers over him, man. Honestly, uh, my problem with Josh Jacobs, there's a couple of things. One, he's hurt. OK, uh, two is last week against Indy. He played 43 percent of snaps. Devontae Booker was in on 28 percent and Jalen Richard was in on 31 yep. percent. If he's not getting the passing down work, he's an RB2. That's just what it is. I mean. Teams are going to be able to score on the Raiders and he has a half bum leg. Give me yep. Cam Akers uh, every day and twice on Sunday, especially when he had 79% of the touches in week 14. So, or of the snap share and was in on 50 snaps. So I would absolutely start Cam Akers over Josh Jacobs. Um, I agree. Josh Jacobs in Josh Jacobs was in on 29 snaps last week and Cam Akers was in on 50. So opportunities, everything. I uh, random quick question for you. Um, so now that uh, Ronald Jones is not playing after having surgery and thrown on the COVID list and Bruce Arians has said that that Leonard Fournette will be starting for Tampa yeah, okay, Bay Bruce. this week. Well, I mean, I, I would be surprised if they play Vaughn or McCoy uh, extensively. Um, you would be is surprised. This finally, the week that, yeah, that's taken like substantial time away. Um, is this finally the week that Leonard Fournette shows his top twelve running back potential that I've talked about all year? <laughs> <laughs> no, Bruce Arians is a freaking liar. He's not going to tell you who the starting running back is. He if did. He, he literally said, he yeah, literally oh, yeah. said, Leonard Fournette is the starting running back. Dude, uh-huh, uh-huh, right. And if my wife had wheels, she would be a bicycle. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter at all. Like, the guy, all he does is lie to people about every It's not starter. nice to call your wife a bicycle. <laughs> There's so many writing jokes I could make. I'm not going to go there. I'm waiting for it. Uh, Are there training nope. wheels or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not 18. I'm not okay. 17. Well, actually, children, wait till you're an adult. Be smart. <clears throat> Lord. Always wear, always, always wear, always use training wheels just to make sure you, the bike doesn't tip over. <laughs> Got to be safe. Um, where were Leonard we? Fournette. Leonard okay. Fournette. That's All right, where we were. Wow. Back to where we were going. All right. Jesus Christ. Um, no, I don't trust Bruce Arians. He lied. All he's ever done is lie about who his starting running back is. Um, if you want to have an idea about who could potentially get touches, just wait to see who's active that day. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. If Keyshawn Vaughn got a little play or if they tried to see if McCoy uh, has anything left in the tank. Um, I, I don't know. It, put me in for a Leonard Ford, Fournette top 20 week this week. Just just put me in for it because he's going to score mean, a touchdown. If he gets one score, he's top 20, right? Yeah, he'll score so, a touchdown. I'm, I wouldn't take that as a board bet, but I would take top 12. <laughs> nope, top 20. Yeah, so um, like I, I noticed in in our uh, our league that Wayne Gallman is somehow a, a, a free agent. Um, he must have been dropped recently. 
Yeah, by right by one of the four teams that's in. Um, you know, again, always always scour the waiver wire just to see if there's any random weird ad drops. Um, you know, I, I know he he's been relatively okay. Um, he kind of have a, had a stinker last week, um, but still eight eight nine points is not terrible. Um, Giovanni Bernard also got dropped in our league. Uh, I would not be comfortable starting him against Pittsburgh. Um, either way, so I'm I'm cool with that. Um, and so, are you uh, are you starting Dobbins or or Gus Edwards ever again going forward? I hate. Why are you in my head? I literally was getting ready to ask you questions. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to answer the question about whether or not to start Dobbins or or no. the Gus Bus. No, man, I had no, I got no freaking clue. I uh, I have no idea if if it's going to be Lamar rushing it in or if it's going to be Gus going from twenty or Do- like. It's clearly not Mark Ingram at this point, clearly. right? So so at least we got rid of one of the three. Um. But unfortunately, we we cut off one head and two more came out. It's like Hydra, so we still got Gus Edwards and Dobbins sitting there, and so I. It's a great matchup. Um, it it really is. Um, so it's it's tough. Now the it's it's just it's frustrating. Um, for me, it's just mostly frustrating. Um, Dobbins had a 62% snap split, um, which is RB one, you know, fringe RB one snap share. Gus Edwards only had a 27% snap share. He was only in on 16 snaps. Um, how he was able to turn 16 snaps into seven carries for 50 yards, two scores and a catch for four yards. I mean, he touched the ball on half the snaps he was in. Um, it's obvious if Gus is in that they're running the ball, the guy can't catch. Um, I mean, the 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 plus last week, the plus I'll take out of it is that Mark Ingram saw a single snap. Um, Justice Hill, for some reason was in on six of them. I don't understand that at all. Um, Justice for Hill. As far as Dobbins this week, the Jaguars, and even Gus Bus, the Jaguars are giving up the second most fantasy points to running backs over the last four weeks at 32 fantasy points per game to the running back That's position. A lot. All I have to say is if you watch, if you watch that game and you saw how the offense works, I mean, if you think about it, how many points per game is uh is Baltimore averaging right now? averaging on the season. Yeah. Or even in the last like four to six weeks. Um, it's a few scores a game. Yeah. But they had that week where everybody was on the COVID list and then it got delayed and then yeah, RG three played. So um, it, it looked like they figured out their offense. Um, this last week against the Browns, they put up 34 against the uh, Dallas the week before, um, and you know 47 this week against the Browns. I, I would be very surprised if they didn't score at least 30. Um, that's four touchdowns, and so I would be surprised if any of them are passing. If it is, it's going to Mark Andrews, and then that that's uh, at least two rushing touchdowns available between Dobbins, Gus Bus, and uh, Jackson. So the Ravens are averaging uh, three and a quarter touchdowns per game. Um, And so. What I think is, is that. There are. For me right now, there are too many hands in the cookie jar to reliably uh, start uh, J.K. Dobbins. Um, I mean, Lamar had two rushing scores last week and a passing score like Lamar Jackson ran for 124 yards and two scores on the ground. Uh, The week before that, Lamar Jackson had 94 yards and a score on the ground. 
Lamar Jackson is the running back to own in that offense. He is who I would want to start at running back, but he's a quarterback. Um, J.K. Dobbins is sort of the role that he has is, I guess I would describe it as this, is he's a very electric player who uh, does great work making chunk plays and getting chunk plays between the 20s and even gets a little, you know, some work around the goal line and whatnot. But I just feel like with all the option and whatnot, between Lamar Jackson and Gus Bus in the red zone, I don't want to start J.K. Dobbins. Like I he would need another probably 10% of snap share for me to be somebody would, that I think could pop off. Yeah, would you rather start Jeff Wilson provided Raheem Mostert doesn't play? Yes. 100 percent Jeff Wilson, uh, I tweeted from our fantasy football account, the fantasy or what a the F at the FF Sackos on Twitter that big debate uh, on there today. Huge debate. Just one little hot take tweet lit up for 120, 150 some odd likes. I don't know. It wasn't um, even a hot take. I didn't think so. But um any well we can get that to that too. But uh where was I going with this? I'm lost now. You interrupted me. Sorry, Jeff Jeff oh, Wilson Jr. I tweeted that Jeff Wilson is a top 15 play. I think he's a top is. 15 play if most are sits. Yeah. So what I mean, how how much do you like Jeff Wilson this week, assuming Mostert isn't eligible? I mean, we saw what the Ravens did did to Dallas a couple weeks ago. Um Cincinnati just doesn't have the firepower at this point, nor the offensive line to to move an ant out of the way to to for blocking. So um yeah, I I would trust the San Francisco like if Mostert's out, Jeff Wilson could get you to a title game this week. Um, it seems like he's getting 50, 50 carries provided most of out. He's probably going to get 75% of the carries, which would be huge, um, against a very, uh, not great rushing defense. Um, that just looks slow, um, especially against the Ravens a couple weeks ago. So, um, yeah, I, I think Jeff Wilson's a, uh, overly okay start and, and he should be played if you have him, unless you have a couple studs ahead of him. Dallas over the last three weeks is giving up 5.6 yards per rush attempt on the season. Uh, they are also the worst team in the league on the season, averaging 5.1 yards per rush attempt. Uh, so they're even doing worse than their average in, in the last month. So, and, and what is the, what do the 49ers do really well? They run the ball movement at the snap misdirection, run the ball. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I would absolutely start Jeff Wilson as a top 15 play. And I don't think that that's being too outrageous. Um, you mentioned our little Twitter explosion today. So let's talk about it while we talk about running backs. Um, who do you think is the waiver wire pickup of the year? Right. So, I mean, you posted a pretty innocuous uh, tweet of uh, Mike Davis being the um, waiver wire pickup of the year there was like uh james robinson has entered the conversation james robinson has uh disagreed with you did you forget about james robinson uh you sorry you misspelled james robinson uh james robinson star um i mean if if you were drafting when you should be drafting which is the weekend before the season starts or after uh labor day weekend um I mean, Robinson was drafted in every league that I was in except for one. Um, he should have been drafted. It was an auction league and he just kind of got missed. Um, so I, James Robinson was drafted in, in all of my, you know, 75% of the leagues that I'm in. Um, so I, I do not consider him a waiver wire pickup. Um, if you're drafting early, then yeah, obviously he would have been. But still, why did why was he not picked up before the season started? I mean, they basically announced that he was a starter before before week one. Um, so yeah, I mean, Mike Davis has saved teams. He's been really great uh, when he's played, and even when Christian McCaffrey played, he still produced. Uh, it doesn't seem like McCaffrey's coming back this year. They're probably just keeping him out. Uh, I know he had a quad injury um, pop up once he came back. Um, I, again, I would be surprised if if he plays. 
uh yeah mike davis has been absolutely fantastic yeah i mean uh, i thought i mean all i don't know maybe it's just um maybe it's just the uh the group of people that we uh interact with that are locked into fantasy football on our fantasy football twitter account it's not like the common layperson who are just you know just very t- in tune to fantasy football but i just think mike davis is clearly going to has already had and will continue to have a better fantasy playoff run than James Robinson has yep. had and will have yep, um, matchups even I, with Washington week 16 for Mike Davis. It doesn't matter if James Robinson was the one that gets you to the playoffs. If you can't take it home because he dropped a 10 pointer last week and then has Baltimore and Chicago to finish out his season and is a low end RB two. Um, to me with very uh, with very little upside they're going to be down in all those games and have to throw and they're back to Minshew where they're just going to air it out exactly 50, 50 times a game probably I mean unless he can rob Minshew of a touchdown in the red zone I don't think that he's anything more than a low end RB2 and by the way you're going up against the Ravens and the Bears like in back to back weeks it's just it's not going to be great Yes, the Ravens are injury riddled right now. Sure. Um, giving up 27 fantasy points per game to the running back position over the last four weeks. Um, that number plummets all the way from 27 to just about 22, 23 on the season. So they're giving up four or five more fantasy points per game to the running back position right now because of all of their injuries and the COVID issues that they've had. Um, so I don't know. I just think that Baltimore is going to take him to the woodshed. And I think Chicago has a very good defense. I'm not expecting a lot from James Robinson and the Jacksonville offense. I think that Mike Davis presents a lot more upside. He scored four, 14, 15 more points in week 14 than James Robinson did. James Robinson to me, you know what the play was? The play was, Start James Robinson for the first half of the season, 10 weeks, and then trade him um, and try to get somebody that can win your league. That that's who the waiver wire pick is. Um, Try to get around the Mike Davis dud weeks when CMC tried to come back weeks, what, seven through 10 um, when he was kind of what, eight, seven, eight points per week. But yeah, he McCaffrey only came back for one week. I know that as a McCaffrey owner. Yeah, just devastating. 